So a few months ago, I was cleaning out the attic of my childhood home when I stumbled across my eighth grade journal. <laughs> In eighth grade, I had buck teeth, size 11 shoes, and long skinny toothpick legs. I opened the journal and dusted it off and found one particularly interesting entry. It was about what my life would be like at age 30. In eighth grade, I predicted that by now, I would be married with two kids, <laughs> play professional football for the Denver Broncos, <laughs> and own a self-driving car. <laughs> See, when I was young, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be the second Neil to step foot on the moon, <laughs> the first doctor to cure cancer. But as I got older, voices and doubts told me I wasn't going to play football, that being an astronaut is not a reasonable career, and that curing cancer, pff, good luck. These voices still plague me today. Outer Critic says, you can't work at X company. They only hire engineers. And when I think about raising my hand in class, I immediately put it down because I'm worried that what I'm going to say isn't smart enough. The voices, the voices in my head keep me wishing and wanting rather than daring and doing. But I realize I'm not alone. I conducted a survey and asked over 50 people this one question. I wish I had the courage to. One of my friends said, I wish I had the courage to bring up an uncomfortable topic at the GSB, that I wouldn't be judged for saying it. Another person said, I wish I had the courage to leave my high paying job and start a company. Another person said, I wish I had the courage to tell my parents I'm gay. What do you wish you had the courage to do? See, the problem is, is these voices of doubt, of fear, they're crippling our relationships. They're hindering our potential. They're telling us, you know what? Get back in line. Play it safe. Follow the herd. See, the opposite of courage is not cowardice. It's conformity. The opposite of courage is not cowardice, it's conformity. There was something about finding my eighth grade journal that brought me back to my junior year of college. It was a cold winter night, and I was in an empty college football stadium. I was cleaning it because I was earning money because I was a student at BYU. I swept soggy popcorn and half-eaten burritos with other trash. I collected it by hand. I looked up from the trash at the empty field. What happened to the dreams I had as a kid to play college football? See, voices told me, voices of fear, of doubt, you know what? You can't play, you're a junior now. You can't play Division I football, especially not a team that's ranked seventh in the nation. One kid said, dude, you're not going to play in the NFL, so why don't you spend your time looking for a job? A couple weeks passed, and my roommate Josh, he entered my room where I was laying on my bed, resigned to my current place in life. Neil, I signed you up for tryouts, he said, as he handed me the paper. You can do it. I realized that it was easier to not try out than to try out and fail. But I remember the words of my high school coach. There's no shoulda, woulda, coulda. There's only I did. So despite enormous doubt, given my limited eligibility, my small stature, my just all this doubt, I courageously confronted my fear and tried out. And to be honest, it felt a little bit like this. <laughs> it's not the outcome that mattered, but for me, it was that I faced my fear and did something I wanted to do. I made the team that winter, only to be cut in the spring. <laughs> but with newfound conviction that what I was doing mattered to me. It didn't matter what anybody else said, it mattered to me. 
I attacked 5 a.m. workouts in an abandoned field near my house. I ran sprints, ran upstairs till I wanted to puke. I came back that fall, I tried out again, and I made the team. I remember standing on the field after the final game under the lights. I looked up into the stands where just a season before I was cleaning up trash. I can't believe I almost didn't try out. Satisfaction came from being true to myself. What matters to you? What are you committed to? Do you find yourself wanting and wishing or daring and doing? Do you find yourself standing in the stands or playing on the field? It's been said that if what we believe is different than what we do, we will never be happy. If what we believe is different than what we do, we will never be happy. Steve Jobs said it like this, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't let the voice of others' opinion drown out your own inner voice and have the courage to be true to your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you want to truly become. Everything else is secondary. You know what's interesting about Steve Jobs? He was cut from his team. Think about Thomas Edison. His teacher said, you're, you're not smart enough to learn. Walt Disney was fired from the newspaper for lacking imagination and creativity. <laughs> These were people who were committed to something greater than their fear. It's funny to me to think about, you know, what would a world be like if Jobs had given up? If Edison and Disney had listened? No phones, no lights, no Lion King, <laughs> no Mustafa, Akuna Matata, no Goofy, no Donald Duck. <laughs> Hanging in my bedroom wall, next to where my eighth grade journal now sits, is a quote that I look to when I face fear. It's kind of long, and you probably heard it before. But I want you to think about one thing that you wish you were doing now, but you're not. Teddy Roosevelt said this. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out where the strong man stumbled, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, and who at worst, if fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. My ask of you, when voices of doubt and fear enter your mind, when critics tell you you can't, go ahead and do it anyways. Dare to leave the stands and enter the arena because real satisfaction comes from being true to yourself. Thank you.